Hey everybody, welcome back to Blockchain Central. Today we have a very special episode for you. We're lucky enough to have Colin LeMayhew and Andy Johnson from The Nano Project. Colin is the founder and CEO of the project, while Andy is the communications manager. The guys are going to be interviewed by Benjamin Robson from our partner company, Block Essence DLT. Take it away, Ben. So hi, this is Ben from uh, Block Essence DLT. We are very lucky to have Andy and Colin from Nano joining us today. Um, Andy, Colin, if you could just say a few words to introduce yourself, maybe start with, uh, start with Colin. Yeah, um, I'm Colin LeMahieu, the founder of Nano, and it's exciting to be here, guys. Uh, it's good to, good to talk with you. Nice. And I'm I'm Andy Johnson. I'm the um, communications manager at the Nano Foundation, and um, again, I'm I'm pleased to be here. Happy to happy to chat. Nice. Thank you. Welcome, and uh, thanks for coming along. Um, I think we'd like to start with. Uh, Maybe the topic of the hour, uh, talk about green technology. Um, part of the mission statement of Nano is to provide a sustainable global currency. And we know that Bitcoin can be a bit of an energy monster. So in light of this, how um, how important is, a, is an environmentally conscious operation for, for you at Nano? Maybe Colin, you could, uh, you could start with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it tops one of the design features that we had um, in Nano um, when, I, when I started it. Uh, I, I love the idea of having a digital digital money, a digital way to exchange value, but then the way that they were designed at the time was at a large expense of energy consumption. And I, I set out to figure out if there was a way to to get the same results, you know, the same decentralization, the same um, uh, guarantees that people want in digital money without the energy footprint. And I think Nano achieves that. Yeah. Okay. And do you um, also call? And I think this may maybe a question better suit. For you, do you think there, um, or have you encountered any any technical challenges when it comes to developing um, a green crypto- cryptocurrency or a green blockchain project? Yeah, I, the the challenge doesn't necessarily come from it being green in and of itself. The the problem is to get the same results that you want. So mostly, what you want with digital money is um, decentralization, and that usually means that you have to have an open network. And when you have an open network, you have to make sure that the activity that's going on in the network achieves the goal of what you're trying to do. So that means people can transact money quickly, efficiently, um, and people aren't putting uh, useless transactions into the network. So um, the the proof of work and our uh, the way that we do our quality of service, preventing spam on the network is probably the, the most technically um, different thing than we do than other cryptocurrencies, but it's not a particularly um, hard problem it's just a it's a quality of service problem and you know internet pro internet networks and networks have this issue they have to deal with all the time um and they do it in various ways and we did it uh the way that we do it in nano okay perfect um andy when it when it comes to the marketing or pr implications of this um or implications of successfully developing uh like a green or sustainable centered blockchain um how can you sort of market your product based on on that and do you, do you find um, getting over the noise of some of the negative press about the the unsustainability of, of, of Bitcoin, for example, hinders your progress there. Uh, not really. That's more of a a useful way for us to start talking about Nano. Really, mm. like a lot of people who who uh, have concerns about the environment, who consider themselves to be environmentally conscious, might also be the same type of people which. Um, embrace the, the, the core tenets of, of cryptocurrency and mm-hmm. it, it, it's it's c- can be difficult for people to um to to resolve that internal conflict of wanting a a more decentralized type of money but also um wanting to respect the environment so for nano it's pretty easy we can give people a a better Type of easier to use type of digital money mm-hmm. that is also exceptionally green. So when people talk about um, mining, the effects of mining, the growing um, energy consumption of cryptocurrency networks, it's perfect a way for us to talk about nano and to talk about the positive aspects of nano. Okay. So nano, so it's good. Yeah, I, absolutely, it's just like it. It's kind of defies belief to think that you know we're creating a digital money, something that's going to connect it over the internet. 
and it consumes an enormous amount of electricity that's um, not necessary. That's not usually what digital systems are. Usually you think of computers and digital things as really efficient and you know low power, but yeah. um, that wasn't the case, but we think that we have made it the case. Yeah, so, so Nano effectively removes this dilemma between um, using digital currency and the, the environmental effects that it may have. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's such a new industry anyway. We don't want extra things that make people leery of it. Mm. You know, they think of digital money as kind of out there. They don't quite understand it. And then they also hear that it consumes a ton of electricity. Well, that just puts people off. They're not going <laughs> to yeah. not going to go into that. Um, so, yeah, it's great marketing for us. Yeah, I mean, today on the day that we're recording this, um, there's a global climate strike going on. Um, there are people <laughs> yep. all over the world on the streets waving placards around for a good cause. And uh we thought we'd like to include something about that to kick this off with and uh, go on. But <laughs> absolutely, and th- and that's just going to keep growing and growing. It's not mm. it's not uh, something which is a trend. It's it's a growing realization of the responsibility that we have. So yeah. we expect that to grow, and also the the desire for um, a better financial system is going to grow and grow. So yeah. We're well positioned moving forward it, for people to. It's not yeah. just a um, like a cause or an environmental thing. It it has a real business impact on this. You know, all of that energy expenditure needs to be paid by someone, and it's paid internally on these other uh, cryptocurrency networks, and that's a cost of using the tool. So we've we've eliminated that, and we've also eliminated that that cost. So not only is there an environmental um, like ideology. Mm benefit to doing that, but there's also just a, a straight up business case of this, there's a lower depreciation of your asset over year over year by using this. Okay, nice. And um, continuing on the topic of, of sustainability, um, it, it, it is argued that decentralized solutions um, are inherently less sustainable than centralized solutions. Like what, what's your take on this? Um, how, what's your vision on this when it comes yeah. to Nano? Yeah, I mean, it, from a technical standpoint, it, it's strictly true that a centralized system can be um, faster and uh, more efficient than a decentralized solution. Um, we didn't, we don't pick a decentralized solution because it's um, necessarily the most optimal in that aspect. We pick decentralized because we don't want a single entity controlling the monetary policy of, of the currency that we've created. So we have to kind of take that take that hit while moving into the decentralized realm. However, the way that we've designed Nano, what we have to look at it as engineers is, are we achieving the goal of what we're trying to do? So even though a decentralized solution may be slower, is it fast enough to process global payments? And we think we think that it is. Um, and that that's really the, what matters is, it, it may be slower than a centralized system in some aspects. However, is it fast enough for the goal that we're trying to achieve? And that's what we always look at. Okay, sure. Andy, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, well, just, uh, echo, echo a lot of that, to be honest. Uh, a, a centralized solution to to money, to cryptocurrency, just isn't isn't what we're going for. So there's it. Ha- our solution has to be based in a decentralized manner. And as Colin said, building it as efficiently as possible mm-hmm. from the ground up is, is the only way that you're going to get to the point where you can have a, a reasonably sustainable um, solution to this. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, on the topic of, uh, of privacy, um, from maybe a technological standpoint, um, like one might argue that data privacy has become um, one of the most important commodities of this decade. Um, like what's, what's your take on the importance of privacy um, in the crypto space, um, either from a technological or, a, or from a societal point of view? Um, well, it's it's something which a lot of people desire. It's a uh, um, it's something which a lot of people assume exists with cryptocurrency um, from the start. But obviously, as we know, many cryptocurrencies have public ledgers, a decentralized um, public ledger, so you can you can track transactions that way. Um, in terms of creating a cryptocurrency in two thousand and nineteen and and getting it into the world, it seems like the the projects which have privacy-based transactions seem, seem to have more opposition from like regulation. Um, governments are more skeptical yeah. of, of privacy-based coins. So to bake that into the into the core protocol can sometimes be a, a bit of a risk and, and maybe cause some inherent um, 
inherent barriers to adoption, particularly early adoption. So it seems yeah. um, it seems more um, I don't know, more sensible to to leave that to to us to either a second layer solution in the future or to avoid it completely for the time being. So that, that's a kind of approach that yeah. we took. Yeah, I mean, from our perspective um, and looking it out there, adoption means that people are going to have to accept cryptocurrency in their businesses. And um, regardless of what people's, you know, philosophy or political opinion on uh, whether, you know, you should be tracking your transactions or not, or whether you should be able to operate privately or not, reality is most um, people in most countries in the world and businesses have to have transparency in, in their transactions to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And if that's not possible, then it's not going to be possible for um, storefronts or anything with a physical presence to really um, make use of cryptocurrency. So this trade off, um, you know, we, yeah, I think like Andy said, it's very interesting um, to like us and a lot of people. But right now it's it's not practical and mm -hmm. it could hinder adoption. Um, and we still have there's like a large value proposition just just in you know digital money itself privacy would be yeah. great to add on but you know digital money is already a revolution um so we're just focusing on that do you, do you think that's something that you would look to in the future or is this something that um you haven't really considered at this point in time yeah uh, i mean i've i've said it before if, if we can find an efficient way to do this kind of going back to that engineering standpoint mm -hmm. of does it achieve the goal of what we're trying to do it has to be able to process global transactions mm -hmm. um so if we can get a privacy solution that does that, um, and we can integrate it into Nano. Uh, I'll definitely look at that. Okay, so it's, it's um, like an, an Andy said, problem. something around maybe maybe like layer two solutions that could help you out there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. So um, moving on to um, a bit about society. Um, part of the the Nano mission statement talks about building a more equal <laughs> world. Um, how how do you think that widespread adoption of Nano could improve? Um, living conditions or society around around the world. Yeah. Uh, Andy, do you want to talk about that a little yeah. bit? Yeah. What you've seen? Or... So, um, I mean, there's there's lots of examples around the world of technology and the increased access to technology, being able to um, empower people a little bit more financially. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's, there's clearly, there's studies out there that show that having um, greater access to a banking system and a way to store your own wealth can lead to um much better much better quality of life and um mm -hmm. increased increased um, yeah there's something like four billion people that don't have access to <laughs> bank accounts so yeah a great example is um is the m-pesa in kenya this is something which people talk about a lot in the crypto space and it's a good example of where technology has been used to empower people they they had a basic problem of find it difficult to um, disseminate cash cash loans to people in Kenya to through through lack of basically the resources to get the cash around the country access to um, convenient banking systems in local areas so they leaned on the exact existing te technology of mobile phones and I mean some of the studies that I've read have shown that Kenya has almost half its GDP running through the M-Pesa in a year and that wow. and that network is centralized and the funds are, are backed by a central authority so it shows that the desire and, and the need is there for people to use this type of um, technology and with nano we we can offer that for people with a an internet connection which is much an internet connection is much more prevalent than what people think these days so mm -hmm. great mm. great stretches of um africa for instance have got access to um good 3G networks. Nano can basically offer the same thing that M-Pesa offers, but without the reliance on a central authority. So there's no single point of failure and people can use it and interact globally with the global cryptocurrency, the, the global Nano network, just by um, mm -hmm. using that. So I think that's a good example of where you, we've already seen social um, growth and empowering people by using financial technology in, in, in quite a hacky way by using mobile phones and text messages. So that's why we feel that Nano can can really make a difference in, in places like that. And, and there's so many of them around the world. 
So, so that's what yeah. Nano can do. Yeah, I mean, you, you hit a really good point is there's just a surprisingly large number of places in the world that you wouldn't expect it where there's constant, you know, banking trouble or monetary trouble, especially in a increasingly international world. Um, these countries that, you know, make their own currency, that's pretty common. And then they start to lock off transfers in and out of this currency um, into foreign currencies. They lock it off because they think it you know, supports their own internal currency or whatever their government policies are, but uh, it impacts real people's lives. Like they can't get payments for services that they're doing. They can't buy things um, elsewhere. Um, and it, it impacts their life to a great degree. So uh, figuring out those problems, like lay, laying out the issues of, you know, what issue are you having? How do we, you know, solve that is what we're working on. Um, yeah, as a group. There's a lot of lot of examples as well of people using um, d- digital currencies for, for for like when they when they when they migrate from countries. So they, for instance, in Venezuela, there's um, hyperinflation. People mm. people are opting to put their their wealth into cryptocurrencies so that they can travel, they can move to another country. Yeah. They don't have to take their their cash with them. They don't have to rely on banks. They can use. Um, the mnemonic phrases are quite popular. People will memorize mnemonic phrases and know that mm-hmm. they've got their wealth um, with them without actually having to have have it physically on yeah. them. So there's there's lots and lots of ways that um, cryptocurrency is going to be able to help people in the future. Mm-hmm. I think this um, this brings us nicely onto the the topic of Libra. Um, like one of their core social equality goals is um, is they believe that many more people should have access to financial services and to, and to cheap capital. And that they believe that a global, open, yeah. instant, low-cost movement of money will create economic opportunity. So these privacy centralization issues aside, uh, what, what's your take on the these proclaimed social equality goals of the Libra Foundation that, 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 that they've set for themselves? Well, Maybe Colin? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I their goals are definitely in line with what we're doing. Um, I, I think that where it breaks down uh, is looking at the, the business case and then also what is the actual inherent limiter um, that these people have that it is disconnecting them from the banking world. Mm-hmm. Um, like Andy already said, every, they all have ac- internet access already. Um, they have smartphones, they have access to the internet. Um, so they, they can do use digital apps that everyone uses in um, around the world and, you know, in Europe, and the United States. So what is it that's actually causing the problem? When you dig down into it, the actual cause of the problem is, is the banking infrastructure underneath it. Um, specifically, if they can't trace money in and out of a specific area, um, down to specific accounts, you know, banks won't peer with each other. A U.S. Mm-hmm. bank won't send money or accept money out of a bank in, um, like, uh, the middle of Africa or something. So does in my mind i think of does libra achieve this goal well it's a reserved back currency that is made by primarily u.s companies um that is trying to do this transaction so they're going to have the same problems that banks do already today you know venmo can't give access to the middle of the um africa in the middle of africa for the same reason libra won't be able to the problem isn't the technology the problem is the regulations around moving fiat currency Mm -hmm. So really, you need to get away from fiat currency. You need to get away from um, reserved back currency entirely in order to solve this problem. And, and they're not doing that. So they're they're cloaking, you know, reserved back currency, which is the exact same thing as the banking system today, with a little bit of cryptocurrency words, and then you know trying to push their platform on it. Um, so I don't think that they'll be able to penetrate these markets that they think that they're going to, mm-hmm. um, frankly. Andy, do you have something to add to that? Well, just that it, their approach is it is very much aligned with with the things which we talk about when we talk about cryptocurrency. It's just there doesn't necessarily have to be a um, hundred multinational corporations running nodes when people people can can run nodes anywhere and be be selected more democratic mm-hmm. more democratically than um, having to to pay money. To participate in the network like that, so mm-hmm. yeah, we're, we're very we're very similar yeah. in in what we're talking about making happen, but we're very different in in how we yeah. go about that. We we want people 
people and individuals to have control of the network. So, so while, while you have a similar vision, Nano performs the same role without the need for centralization or any assets to actually back that? We think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I kind of what you were talking about earlier, too, is another thing, the, the privacy and the, the privacy of your data is the most important thing that we have right mm-hmm. now. And like, if, if I'm going to start running my transactions through a company, I probably am not going to run my transactions through Facebook. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I, I don't think many people are going to do that. It's, it's going to be an enormous concern. It's already an enormous concern to a ton of governments. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, like they, people have a hard time figuring out a technological solution to how to run, do this in a decentralized manner. And when they can't figure out an efficient solution, they will go with an expensive solution and figure out how to push that cost on everyone else. That's, you know, that's what Bitcoin did with um, proof of work mining. That's what Libra's doing with their network. They couldn't figure out how to scale their network. So they will throw money at the network um, yeah. and throw companies at the network. <laughs> yeah. So um, on, the, on the same kind of topic of, of the business models of some of these um, companies, um, like relevance and success frequently requires significant B2B partnerships. Um, arguably, it's more challenging for a fully decentralized solution to strike these partnerships into existence. Um, how, how do you guys plan to, to work on that for Nano in the future? Yeah, I mean, with um, the B2B relationships, the, the, the first goal of everything that we have, and I, I know I take criticism on this, but it's the first goal is to make sure that the protocol works and functions um, at a basic level. Because if you're looking to do things long term, which we are looking to be in this long term, that's that's the point of the project, um, giving people a stable base that and, and being honest about you know what this currently does at its current state is essential with businesses. Mm-hmm. So that's what our focus has been, um, you know, and we've achieved that goal. We're we're achieving that goal, um, and we're getting close. And as we're pushing out, um, we go to these businesses. I'll take a step back. You, you need to do business analysis of like which which areas need this. You don't want to go into places that don't need cryptocurrency. Their users will never have it. Um, the company doesn't really want to buy it. So you have to be really focused in where we're going, um, and making these relationships, like you said. Um, but there's a whole stack of things that they need in the back end. You know, if they're going to accept payments, they need it to be processed by their tax software, or if they're going to pay their employees in cryptocurrency, you know, their, their accounting software needs to do this. Tax regulations need to be in place. So it's really a matter of get, making sure all these things are in place. So when we, when we go to these companies and we tell them, you know, you can accept cryptocurrency and all the questions that you have and all the problems that you will have on this, we've already predicted. We have solutions for all of them and, and here it is. Um, and just make it very, very easy for them to onboard it and include it in their in their products. Okay. So if Andy, you had anything you wanted to add on yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, for, for us, for, as a, like, we're, we're a non-profit software development company that, that we're making, uh, a really, a really good, good cryptocurrency with with really compelling natural natural incentives. So, we have found that a lot of businesses and services are interested in in what Nano can do, just because of the natural incentives that it provides. Mm-hmm. But the barriers are, are more in terms of um, taxation. How do they tax it? How how does how is the government? Which they're operating with under gonna gonna accept what's happening? Do their customers want to use it? What is there a demand with from their customer base? Is there is there good mm-hmm. um, gateways for people to access cryptocurrency? So partnerships are important. seem to seem to be quite important at the moment in terms of promoting coins and giving coins a bit more of a platform but for for genuine adoption for for real adoption the the work is much more fundamental the work that needs to be done is much more fundamental so you know we speak to companies about the hurdles that they face what what's preventing them from moving into cryptocurrency and we try to work with them to to find solutions and to help educate and and create the resources the okay. fundamental layer that needs to be there for for adoption to occur. So, we spend time on that too, as well as um, listening and and paying attention to what we can do to make things better. Okay. And as long as we remain on like the technical technological cutting edge of peer to peer 
value transfer, then businesses are always going to be interested because when they genuinely start to research cryptocurrencies and which ones will actually work for them, <laughs> um, we will be right there. We'll be right there on the cutting edge okay. offering what we think is the best network possible. So you're more than happy and very open to, to work closely with, with businesses that are looking for... Um, Absolutely. Uh, yeah? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the businesses that we really want are the people that have a, a business plan internally that makes use of cryptocurrency and what they want to do is come to us and ask us essentially for technical support on how to integrate it, mm-hmm. maybe offer suggestions on difficulties that they've had on it. Um, the companies that we don't tend to interface with, and you know, they're kind of common in cryptocurrency, but it's, you know, people that are asking us for, for promotional money. They want, yeah. <laughs> you know, coins to like airdrop on people and generate, um, the idea is to generate a following, but the reality is, is they're, they're gamed by a small number of people. Um, the, the buzz goes away very, very quickly. So we need to look at long-term real business impact. Um, and that's, those are the relationships that we go yeah, for. That's, that's really good to hear. That's excellent. <laughs> excellent news. Um, yep. so in terms of the, the, the business case for a, a zero fee ecosystem, um, what do you think the main incentives are for individual users or also other other businesses to participate? Uh, you already already mentioned being at the the, the cutting edge of, of when it comes to speed. Um, but what what else do you think that would incentivize some of these uh, some of these people? Yeah, well, I mean, the the reason to use Nano is it, it I mean it's simple, but it's um, it doesn't cost you to transact money, and you can send money to anywhere in the world instantaneously. Mm-hmm. Uh, businesses want that, users want that. So that's that's the drive for people to want to use Nano. Um, so then all we have to do at that point is cover the costs. So, you know, we've made our nodes and the network usage as low as possible. So it's as mm-hmm. low cost as possible. So when businesses want to integrate us, they can set up a node um, for like $30, $40 a month, maybe a hundred if you want a really high end machine um, to connect to the nano network and really participate in the consensus this isn't just a a, a thin uh, node this is a full node mm-hmm. it can be operated that cheaply and you're participating in the consensus um yeah and then they when they do that they get to use this network that is free and fast okay nice so um so you you really believe that um that like technical excellence alone um is is enough to take you um much further into, into well, mass adoption well, yeah, I mean, it, it is a, it's a legitimate business case uh, proposal. It's the money gets there faster than anything else that's ever existed. And it there is no cost to, to doing that. So the the cost of running a node is just an, an operational expense. It's like buying a printer, or buying, buying printer paper. You, you have a business plan. You, you're not making revenue off of the printer. It's, it's just a tool that you use in order to uh, run your business. And what really matters is your business case and cutting out expenses in the, in your bottom line. So it, we, typ- typically, I think um, people in cryptocurrency think about this from the miner's perspective, like how does a miner make money? But a miner is a new business. It's not, it's not central to the core of like all the people and the consumers mm-hmm. running a business. So their incentives are not aligned with everyone else. While the miner may want to run a Bitcoin node because they can make money off of it, if people can't transact quickly and cheaply, there's no incentive for anyone else in the world to participate in the network whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So that goes to the adoption part. And you're going to have low adoption if you don't have a a reason for people to use it. So we started at that fundamental thing, like why would someone want to use Nano instead of their credit card or a bank transfer? Mm -hmm. And the reason is because it's cheaper and faster. Okay. And that... That fundamentally, many economically wins in the end. Okay, so, for, so from a business perspective, you're um, giving businesses a tool to enhance or augment what they already have and uh, just make it better. Yeah, okay. make it better. So when they look at their before, how much they're spending, and when they look at it after, once they add nano, even running a nano node, the cost is going to be lower. Yeah. So that's just accounting, going to the business people, pitching a case. They talk to the tech guys, integrate it, and now their costs are lower. That's a business case. Yeah, yeah. I think um, at least from from our perspective and the companies that we talk to and work with, um, 
they're much more open to to finding new technological solutions that enhance what they're doing already rather than replacing entire systems or structures they're happy to like you said buying a new printer only this printer is so much better than the previous one yeah and crypto um, yeah exactly i so go on andy you want to go so i was just going to say that like cryptocurrency it's not something which is going to completely replace um fiat conventional money it's it's going to be an option which people want to have the opportunity to use. So with something like Nano, you can integrate it into a business um, and just provide people with the opportunity to pay with it without having to, to replace entire systems or mm-hmm. uh, without without having that mental barrier that's, you know, we're, we're not trying to completely overturn the banking system. We're just trying to provide people with a with an option, with a different option moving forward. So. It's um, it's it's not as large of an undertaking, I think, as what people realize to integrate yeah. nano into business. Yeah, yeah. Is it- I mean, I think there's there's two maxims that we kind of go by, or at least I do internally. It's one is when we're doing something new, we don't want people to change two things simultaneously, just because it's psychologically harder for people to say, "I want to make this jump and this jump at the same time." It's much easier if you're just changing one thing at a time because it's much more natural for them to like make incremental improvements um, slowly. And uh, yeah, and yeah, we also want it to be an, an add-on, just kind of like Andy was saying, an add-on, an incremental move. Um, not We don't want a hard cut over to things because that also makes people not want to adopt it. Mm. It has to be incremental and uh, it, easy to integrate. Is it, Andy, um, on the marketing side, do you, do you think this approach um, will help you or help Nano uh, gain a more significant market share uh, in an environment with so many different solutions available? Well, yeah, I mean, I, let's be honest. At the moment, um, it's it's hard it's hard to be of the opinion that um, market shares are are um, kind of allocated by technical um, technical ability of, of the projects. It seems. That we're still in, in really in the infancy well, infancy of it all, where um, the technical proficiency of coins is not the the greatest factor in affecting their their market share at the moment. Mm-hmm. So, what what can we do about that? Well, we can we can carry on um, carry on developing the protocol to to put it even further ahead of, the, of some of these other um, projects and make sure that there's infrastructure there for businesses to. To, to take it and adopt it and to put it into their mm-hmm. in, into their um, already established systems, which which we're doing and we, which we're focusing on. So we think as the market matures, as um, as re- more regulation comes in, more guidance, these businesses will feel more confident and trustworthy in in digital currency as a concept, and then they'll begin to research it and they'll they'll quickly realize that that from an actual utility point of view. Um, there's only, well, there's very few com- <laughs> compelling options out there, and we we definitely feel like we are we're the most compelling option for for value transfer. So, we're, we're going to stick to our guns and carry on um, carry on building the protocol and the infrastructure required to make it successful when when people are ready to to judge things on okay. on utility. So, so you think kind of as, as more and more companies understand the. the- potential benefits or the, the operational costs that they can they can save here. Um, it's just a matter of time until there's a queue outside your door. We think we think so. And we also see we, I mean not we're not gonna, you know, expect everybody to come to the door, but we've had um we have genuine interest. People genuinely interested. They they go down um the coin coin market cap rankings, they they go down, they look at each project one by one. Mm-hmm. And often often they they get in touch with us saying that that's what they've done and, and want to know more about what we do and how we do it. So that's very positive. We also have, um, it, it's beginning also that there's a, a UK based cutting edge electronic point of sale device co- company called Capture. They um, they discovered us independently. They they came to our recent London meetup and they've, they've looked at all of the different cryptocurrencies for um the modern world and they they think nano is the one for them they've mm-hmm. developed um a really a really cool little gray paper which they released where they were, were pitching cryptocurrency to their clients and um and they talked about the things which made nano um a, a good fit for them 
and um, it's the things which we've been sticking to all along. They like the fact that it's fast transfers, that mm-hmm. it's it's as quick as what we do now in terms of contactless payments. It's fearless um, and, and sustainable. Also, the fact that it's fully distributed as well. We have a lot of, um, that's something which we haven't talked about yet, but Nano is is fully distributed. So we are managing the, the network is performing in a truly decentralized way. There's no um, gigantic um, reserves of the currency held by anyone or any entity. So that's also very important to businesses too. And then we're, we're pleased to have been able to complete our distribution in 2017. So there's other, the other solutions out there are going to be years and years until they have distributed their coins in. Businesses, okay. don't, businesses don't want the risk of um, the value of their of their crypto assets being <laughs> being yeah. heavily watered down. Yeah, I mean, I've heard I've heard that multiple times um, from people that, especially very financial centered people, it's like they I they tell me I've looked at currencies that are out there. I discounted all the ones that are extremely slow. I found a couple others that are really fast, like yours. However, there's a couple of them out there that. Fifty percent of it is owned by like three people, and they're like, "I will never touch that because uh, it's way too much of a risk." Um, so people do look at this; it is an important thing, and it, it affects adoption. Mm. I think that's one of many things that's in cryptocurrency that's kind of hindering adoption in the whole market, um, and has, is leading us to use more of like it. We're in a more speculative um, market cap scenario where it's not really based on intrinsic value it's it's based on a speculative value and i think that's because adoption is just so so low we haven't gotten in, in into an industry that's really making use of cryptocurrency for various reasons yeah um, and we want to eliminate those I mean, do, do you have um, a specific target group i mean at the, at the moment a lot of the the messaging you send out seems to be very developer centric um i mean i've seen some of the um like gaming projects built on nano like nano quake for example um do you see a certain industry where nano will, will go mainstream faster than anywhere else so yeah, we we found that um that our, our messaging is is quite developer centric but we also try to to speak to people um more early adopters, more more business owners too. So the messaging is is pretty difficult to um to hit all of the marks on. But mm. we um we, we think that the developers of the people, well they do, they come to Nano and they they build amazing things. They they build the ecosystem and it's what we're gonna need um to take things forward. We don't particularly target anyone um so overtly because what we do is so general. It's it's um, a digital currency, it's transfer of value. So in any area where that's important or where people um, want to improve their overheads or, or their apps, whatever, that's where Nano is going to succeed. So because we have such a simple um, strategy, such a, such a simple proposition, value proposition, we find um, we see things everywhere coming from all over the world. So we have communities in Venezuela, Brazil, um even in Ghana, most recently, we have developers building games. Um, people just who like to develop with cryptocurrency use Nano because it's fast mm-hmm. and it's fearless. Um, so our, our messaging is <clears throat> is roughly targeted at anyone that shows an interest. Um, we think we think it's probably better to to speak to people that um, that, that have the natural inclination to to interact with it first, the natural desire, rather than going and trying to. Mm-hmm. Um, Pushing it, pushing it on people, and making people um, mm-hmm. forcing people to understand, which is incredibly I mean, difficult. There are a couple industries that um, stand out more than others, but they're not specific; they're general. We've talked about them before: international money transfer, remittance, mm-hmm. um, FX trading, so currency trading between countries. Is it compelling? I think any um, digital delivery of services is very interesting so if somebody has a product that's digitally delivered to someone um you can reach a global audience with one payment method um and not have to worry about fraud or chargebacks on it so that's that's something that i think is very compelling to people that you know actually process credit card transactions um digital delivery is usually a way to easily you know dump dump money off of fraudulently obtained credit Mm -hmm. cards so this kind of eliminates that, um, and yeah, just industries like that. High, highly mobile people and internet and international connections is um, 
the biggest ones. Okay, kind of on, on that topic of um, international money transfer, um, and then the, the fraud topic as well. When it, when it comes to things like um, compliance and, and regulations, as we as we mentioned a bit earlier on at the start of the conversation around different European countries, um, kind of clamping down on on the Libra project. Um, like what what is what is Nano's stance on on, on looking to compliance and regulatory authorities and how necessary do you think they are in uh, in the crypto space that we're, we're in at the moment? Well, I, I mean, they're definitely necessary if we're looking for adoption because mm-hmm. um, the, phys- the physical store, the physical place where you purchase things that wants to accept cryptocurrency um, is where the regulators are going to go knocking when they want compliance. Mm-hmm. So regardless of what everyone in the crypto sphere wants to happen, if you want adoption, uh, by the world at large, it will have to be in a compliant way. So our our job is to teach and educate um, policymakers on how digital money works, and it works differently than the existing banking system, the existing currency systems. But it it can work, and it will it, it will work. Like all we all they need is to be able to um, learn how this is, be taught how it works, and then you know they they'll be able to go back to their peers and you know come up with solutions on how they want to do it from a policy perspective are you regularly talking um, to uh policymakers and people that are bringing these regulations into into law yeah i mean any anytime we can i've i've done a lot of that over in, in europe because it seems in general that europe and the uk uh, are more open to cryptocurrency or just like changes in the finance system that uh, it, in my perspective, the U.S. is um, it, it clamps down on financial related things a lot more. Um, it's not impossible, obviously. They're, they're still widely used, but I think Europe is just slightly more open about it. Um, but yeah, anyone that we can talk to and we try to talk to them generally about cryptocurrency because this isn't this isn't like a self-serving discussion that we're having with them. Yeah. Um, it's everyone that works in nano believes in the idea of digital money and we want it to be a thing. And we want to push that conversation out in a generic way. And they've been very receptive to that once they realize we're not trying to like um, pit, give them a pitch, which um, they have to always avoid. But yeah, they, they like hearing about it because they're not experts and they need to talk to experts. That That's literally the only way they learn. They're not going to open the white paper. They're going to talk with a colleague that has a friend yeah, that yeah. you know knows cryptocurrency. Colin's been very modest as well because he was invited to the um, European parliament to talk about um, digital <laughs> currencies when yeah. so there are <laughs> yeah on that panel we had some interesting we had a couple another cryptocurrency we had um the eva khalili the greek mp and european central bank related to mm-hmm. digital currencies there so i mean it was a good discussion these are all the people that um are con- concerned with this topic not really concerned but you know they have they have an interest in this and um yeah and it was quite it. it was quite surprising at the level of um general general knowledge is is probably i mean it's it's growing every day but it was we were quite surprised at the time that there was so many misconceptions still at that level and so yeah. much so much work that needs to be done for, for people in those positions of power to, to understand what what it's mm-hmm. capable of and it's good that you're in a position where you can uh go over there and and uh, yep. share your knowledge with them in a, in a constructive way. Um, so on the the nano ecosystem itself, um, maybe this is it's probably a question for both of you. Um, how, how are you attracting like, talented developers to your project when there are so many different um, projects around at the moment? Like, What are the, what are the, u- the unique selling points um, of nano that speak most strongly to, to talent at the moment? So we, we've talked about this a little bit already, but the mm. just the like the natural um, the natural features of the network make um, are very appealing to developers that want to work with cryptocurrency. Again, I said it again, but the fact that the transactions are fast and fearless means people that are developing their their apps and their their services can can work much much more quickly, much much more cheaply with Nano. And um, they also have like a fantastic bank of resources. We work hard to make sure that um, projects have good visibility, they're well supported. 
we found that we've had a lot of developers enter the nano community from with old crypto projects that they'd abandoned so there was there was a lot of development work abandoned when fees and transaction times on bitcoin became um unfeasible to, for these guys to develop so they they come to nano and we we see them picking up their projects again moving quickly with them and uh, and, and embracing us based on on just the, the natural the natural ability of the network mm -hmm. and then you you must be getting so many ideas from so many different places that help you grow as as a project well, we do we have um we have a, a magnificent um community of beta testers that help um Colin and the developers to to refine, test the protocol, put new things in, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we we just have a great community. And I think it's it's mm -hmm. the we talk about the natural all of the features of the network and everything. And I think what the one Nano's most strongest um, qualities is is the people that we've got in the community because they're the ones which which are creating things. They're they're telling people about Nano. They're helping to educate and. And, and that's what's really, really great about Nano. It's just we have so much going on. So, I mean, anyone that that takes a look look into into Nano, into the Nano ecosystem, will just see a daunting amount of information <laughs> and um, and projects that have been built on Nano already. Okay. So, for, for any any developers that would like to get involved, you are fully prepared to. Uh, yeah, we've got we've got take on multiple um, like public APIs. There's there's free APIs, so developers don't even have to run a node. To, um, to start developing with Nano these days, they can just um, make callbacks to a to a free API and and get going straight away. Mm. So we try to make it as easy as absolutely possible and take we take all um, all requests for additional um, clarification on things or improvements to the documentation, um, additional services. We, we even include things which make integration easier into the protocol. Um, that's that's what we think it's all about at this stage: ed education and and building and creating mm -hmm. an ecosystem which carries forward. Okay. Colin, was was that something that um, mm -hmm. when you when you started this was that something that was very important to you to have the, the the support network for developers available whenever whenever they needed it? Yeah, um, definitely. I think that we've spent more of our effort and time on making sure that that's in place um, than a lot of other. Uh, cryptocurrencies have and it it comes down to you know ease of integration we want it to be um, a, a very a very easy transition in order to get added into something if, if it takes their developers a ton of time in order to like understand the system they're not used to it um, you know they're just they're just not gonna do it and they're gonna they're gonna wait even longer and hope that eventually it's easy to use um, yeah, but I've been really excited recently about the number of people that are participating and jumping in on it, especially with our beta testers. It's it's been really really helpful. Now people are doing all the things that I wanted in my in my head, but you just didn't have enough time to do by myself. But they're doing very very um, uh, specific and detailed tracking of transaction times, watching how long it takes for an individual transaction to complete. Mm -hmm. Um, which is which has been great. It's been we've gotten some great feedback from the graphs and data that they've produced. Um, nice. And I yeah I can't wait until more people are in on this. It it is it is hard um, to kind of be a, to get a differentiation amongst the three thousand cryptocurrencies that are out there, especially from an outsider's perspective. So, um, but kind of what, going to what Andy was saying, our our focus on simplicity, um, business case. We want everything to be laid out for them in a very easy format to just pick up and use, and then yeah, that's what adoption is. Okay. And and some of the some of the like the cool things are like these APIs that they're, they're not even created by us; they're created by other passionate developers, community members that that want to spread Nano too. So it's not our community is not something which we have to really. Um, we don't have to see it. We don't have to do much at all other than just listen to them and work with them. And, and it, it okay. seems to happen itself. So yeah. it's a really nice effect. <laughs> it's, really, it's really good to hear, really nice to hear. Um, so Colin, um, like how, at the moment, how does how does Nano interface with other um, altcoins or, or, or fiat currency? Um, like as, as we said previously, Nano is at the top when it comes to uh, being the fastest um, 
and how can can the speed and your vision be maintained when in the future uh, the ability to interface with other projects uh, may be vital uh, for the for the ecosystem at large um yeah i mean it, it depends on kind of the interfacing that you want to do there's there's always going to be simple trading stuff between coin in and out of fiat just exchanges mm -hmm. and yeah i mean we'll, we'll be uh, I, hopefully the fastest one on that and then everyone else is slower but you know we're just we're building a better tool that people can use and, and integrate that in there if it saves them an hour or more of transaction time you know that's that's beneficial to lots of people in the mm -hmm. world um if there's other types of integrations there's kind of a effort that people made in order to um, do atomic swaps between chains and all some stuff like that we, we've never pursued anything like that type of direct integration with other coins, um, partially just from a technology perspective. It it doesn't work very well with our, our asynchronous um, ledger. So that would be harder. Plus it, it's just what, what business advantage is there. It's a lot of work to do it. It's a lot of complication. Exchanging things on exchanges is fairly easy. So we had to kind of weigh that in there. Um, okay. But I don't know if you had any other specific type of integration you were interested in hearing about it? Um, no, mainly just interested on how you see Nano fitting in and, and sitting inside the um, ecosystem in the future, or if you had any, any particular plans uh, for that in general. Yeah, I mean, we are we are very, very focused on the transfer of value. So, um, I mean, I don't, there's a couple coins that are that focused on it, but most other ones kind of slap some smart contracts on there and, mm -hmm. you know, all these other bells and whistles that they're trying to add on to it to, to gain adoption but you know we're focused on that one narrow aspect and i mean i i obviously look at um all the technology that's coming out i keep on top of all of that to, and yeah i mean that was a that was kind of my final final question uh, for you guys do you have anything else that you'd like to add or uh, any anything you'd like to say nothing in particular other than just to say thank you for inviting us on to talk it's a pleasure it's been it's been fun working with you guys. Um, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Yeah. Touch. No, yeah. I mean, I don't have anything else to add. But this has been great. This has been probably one of the more fun reviews I've, <laughs> I've done in a while. You guys are you guys are really cool. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah. It was um, it was genuinely a pleasure talking to you both. It was a pleasure having you on the channel. I look forward to uh, seeing what some of our community uh, thinks about this. Thinks about your upcoming video release. And uh, thank you very very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, man. definitely. Well, I'll be, I'll probably be in Europe like sometime this fall. So yeah. let's arrange something in yeah, person. Let's have, a, let's have a face to face interview here in, the, in one of our offices. There we go. Yeah. All, All right. right. I'm going to hand, hand, right. it, hand it back, back to our host, Blue, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. We'd like to also thank Colin and Andy for finding the time to do this interview with us and sharing their super interesting insights. So, what do you think of Nano? Are there any other teams that you'd like to see us interview? Let us know in the comments. Before you go, please note that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog, the link in the description below. You can also follow me on Instagram at TheBlueMantic to catch up with my other projects. See you in the next one.